ザボリシャー Dear listeners of Zabunicha, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for His love and provision of our daily food. Today we are so blessed to receive the message from God the Almighty. Praise the Lord. Today we have a guest, a Zabunisha, who is a servant of God. She is the kind of servant who, when God tells her something, she says it as it is. May God bless her for accepting to serve Him after so many wars that she fought. Problems and punishments endured from God. She. I want to remind you all to use the talents that God gave you. You might think to yourself that it is small, but God gave it to you for a reason. You remember when Jesus talked to his disciples about people that God gave talents but never used them? I implore you in God's mercy to use your talents because God gave them to you for a reason. We are going to be talking to the servant of God. She will talk to us. Without further ado, let me give her the time to give us the message that God placed in her heart for her to propagate to the whole world. What God wants from us is to do what He has planned for us. Let me give her the time to speak, and we shall conclude by praying to God to strengthen us so that we can do what He wants from us. Allow me to welcome her in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, as I just told you, here she is. God sent her to us to listen to what she has to say today. As you can see, she's an old woman, but let me not say a lot and allow her to greet us and introduce herself so that we can listen to her, knowing who she is and how、uh, she's doing. How are you, servant of God? I am very okay. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How have you been? I have been good.、Uh, we thank the Lord. Oh, you seem very happy. <laughs> How have you been lately? We are good in this period of staying home, but it's not only staying home, it is also staying in Christ as well. Absolutely. Lately, it has also been raining. I think everything is good. Yeah, it has been raining, and、uh, rain is a blessing, and all these are guided by God, and we are thankful. Yes,、um, I want you to introduce yourself so that all our listeners can know who is going to be talking to us. Yes,、uh, my name is Emeline Mukamana. I have 11 children, but one died because of refusing to listen to God.、Um, I live in Kayenzi village, n y a b i k e n y e s e r in Gasabo district.、Mm, now, what is your blessing name? The blessing name that people call me is Mama Eric. Yes, Mama Eric will be talking to us. Mama Eric, all of the 11 children are yours, or some are adopted. <laughs> no, I haven't adopted any children. I only have one orphan that I raise. All of the children are mine. Is it the truth? All of them are yours. Of course, they are not mine alone. They have different fathers. I have told my testimony before of the life I have lived. First, I spent three years and a month in my mother's womb. I have told my testimony of how my mother hated me. I later on became a prostitute, and then God saved me to be his servant. God gave me five punishments, almost to six, to become his servant. But because he felt unworthy, I would think it is difficult to serve God. He was sending me to reach people, and going to reach people, I thought they would think that I want something from them and refuse to get the message God has sent me to deliver. That is why I kept on delaying. Delaying and God gave me punishments. Yes,、um, kindly tell us how old are you if it's not a secret? I should have born in 98, but I was born 98-3 in January on the 13th. So you are now 37 years old? Yes, I am 37 years old. Plus the three years you spent in your mother's womb, that's 40. Yeah, around 40 years old. <laughs> Lord Father, for people who haven't heard your testimony, it's on the Zabunisha platform. You can listen to it to know the life that she has lived. Today, you are going to be passing the God's message as you were given. Mama Eric, before we start with your testimony and telling us the message that God gave you, 
I want you to tell us. God gave you five punishments. I want you to tell us about those and why you were punished in the first place. This is for people uh, to understand who is really Mama Eric and also for those who have never heard of you before. I was born a very history baby. I was born differently from other babies and I suffered more than any babies. Upon my birth, my mother hated me and only breastfed me for two years and raised me only for four years, and the remaining I was raised by different people. I can't even tell you how many places I have lived in because I even lived near Burundi in a place called Ruha. No, I want you to tell us about the punishments that God gave you. We haven't yet started with your testimony. Yes, the punishment that God gave me, the first punishment after my salvation, God asked me to serve him, and I said, I'm really going to serve you. I swear, I had nothing on my body. I only had one cloth, but I had had good life before when I was still a sinner. I had a lot of clothes, a lot of clothes, a lot, and mice ate them all in just three days. And there, God told me that even when you fall and you get up, you get up with scars. Even when I brought clothes from other people, mice would eat them. I remained that way. After getting married, I faced the challenge of poverty. It kept pulling me down. I would work really hard, cultivate, but everything would fail. And God would still insist that he wants me to serve him. You will wear clothes as you serve me. You will eat as you serve me. And you will only be well if you serve me. It all confused me, and I said, let me leave the city. God said, no. I prayed about it for three days, but still God said, you will serve me in the city of Kigali. My husband was like, how are we going to raise these children we are having and also those ones you've had before me? It was impossible, but God said to me, nothing is impossible to me. I will make you live in this city. God said that in a church because I knew it, I laughed and everyone was surprised. He went like that for a while, and God said again, stand up and serve me. I refused again. After that, the first punishment that God gave me, I was bleeding blood and water. I kept bleeding blood and water for two weeks. Doctors couldn't see anything abnormal. I went to Kibagabaga, they found nothing. Sehashka, they found nothing. I would just bleed blood and water. The first servant of God that came to me, God told him, if you find a daddy fighting with a daughter, don't ask about it. He added, don't say a word. Tell us, where were you bleeding blood and water? I would bleed and sit on a bucket and it was full of blood in no time. I reached to a point where I felt like there was no blood left in my whole body. And then God asked me, aren't you done yet with what you were doing to come and serve me? And I said, I will serve you, Lord. I only say that on my mouth, but my heart was still closed. God wanted to test me and then the bleeding stopped. The next morning when they came to pick me up to serve God, I told them, how one can serve God with only one cloth? They said, serve God, he will give you what to wear. I refused. The second time God made me sick. I really got sick and went from 50 kilograms and got 30 kilograms. I was being treated at Sehashka. They would treat me with needles and I would only crawl. From there, God told me, can't you stop what you're doing and come to serve me? I would think to myself, God, what am I going to serve you with? I am not an evangelist. I am not a worshiper. I am nothing. I have just came from sins. What will I do? Will they accept me being poor? But God said, I want you to serve me without caring about being poor. That is not what I base on. From there, I straight went in the house of God and become a worshiper. When I became a worshiper, I would sing and people would laugh at me and I quit. When I got in the choir, my talent grew. I would prophesy and people would laugh and say, how can God use such a person? He doesn't lack sophisticated people to serve him. You, Mama Eric, is God using you or you forget about your adultery? I would really feel discouraged 
And I remember that time I was part of a choir called Urukundo, or Love in English. So I stopped. I would really feel discouraged, and God would still insist and say, Serve me, I will make you live in the Kigali city. Right now, I'm not living in the Kigali city, but I have a hope that I will sometime. Um, so what is the third punishment that God gave you? The third punishment that God gave me was kwashior call. Me and my child got kwashior call. We got really sick. My child even got to Sehashka. Nothing changed. They took him to Kibagabaga and then back to Sehashka. And that is the third punishment of kwashior call. So how did God want you to serve him? God wanted me to serve him in a way that if I am a worshiper and he sends me somewhere, I would go. And God didn't send me to simple people. Uh, would he send you to go to sing? No, I would sing, of course, but God would send me to you and say, go tell this one that I want him to serve me. He needs to come back from sins. So uh, he would give you a message to take to someone and you would be afraid. Yes, he would say, if you refuse to serve me, I am going to take away everything you have. You will come to work for me when all roads from me are closed. And you know that all roads to me, that's the ones which are open. Oh, it's now understandable. It's the message that God gave you and you would be afraid to pass it on. Yes, I would be afraid. I would go somewhere and they would tell me, if you want rice, say it. We will give you a kilo, but don't say that God sent you. Does God send crazy people? I was wearing a kitenge called ikanga that only costs 105,000 Rwandan francs. I would say it if they ignored me. I would come home and tell my husband that I delivered God's message, but they ignored me. He would say, obviously, it reached to a point where I felt really discouraged and I stopped everything that has to do with God. And God said up to this time, you haven't stood up and worked for me. I stood up and went from Urukundo Choir or Love Choir to Ubushate Bgimana Choir in Adepeni Masizi here. I was still in Gisozi, so I moved from there, coming here. When I got there, I would say God, and they would all call me crazy. They would say, go first and God do miracles for you. They would add, maybe you are jealous, and church men would tell me, you are jealous that the other people are rich, that they have a better situation, and they don't help you, and you come here pretending that God sent you. After what I told them started to become reality, they would also come back to me and say it's really God in you. I started believing in me and believing that it was really God in me who sends me and what he says become the truth. So now uh, that was the third punishment. Yes, we were now at the third punishment. The fourth punishment God said, I want your message to cross the whole world for them to know. Mm. The world would know it. I said, I got very poor and asked God to at least send me to Uganda. And God said, no, he will make me go by airplane. I told myself, how? How will this work when there are only buses to Uganda and no airplane? How will my message get to the whole world? At that time, I had taught pastors a lot of things and they had ignored me. God said, I want you to pass on your message for the whole world to hear it. The first prophet that we had met on the streets, I remember I was going to cultivate with my who, he called me. Hey, madam, stop. God told me that he wants you to work for him without looking at anything else. He told me that and he said it comes from God. And God wants me to take back the who and start serving him right away. Whatever I have cultivated, failed. I didn't even yell one kilogram. Then I continued serving God. I would worship and pass on God's message. And they would say, we don't believe in your prophesy. You would not have so many children and speak for God. We would rather you bring your prophesy with your tits and give them to wealth people to pray for it, to see if it's really from God. I felt so disrespected, and they would also say, Mama Eric doesn't have families, doesn't have people who visit her. She is from nowhere, and she says God sent her. 
I would really defend myself and say, God really talked to me, but it was in vain. They kept ignoring me. There is an evangelist that came to me while I was in the choir and said, God wants you to work for him. And I said, if he wants to use me, I will accept willingly. The next morning, as I was sleeping, I heard a voice at 3 a.m. He called me three times and said, look at that television. I saw a television and a camera with an eye like this one. I saw two young men. I saw the camera's tripod. I immediately woke my husband and he was like, what happened? I say to him, what I just saw is serious. If you don't pray, we will die. I asked myself, does now God want to put me in a jail? The husband asked me again, what have you seen? I told him that I just saw two young men and one camera, and they told me that it's a television. And I had seen this verse in Exodus, where it was written, Pisam, I will show you. I don't remember well where it is, but it says, Pisam, the promised case is back in Israel. That is where God showed me. Right after that, I prayed with my husband and my children. I remember I told my husband that he, now maybe they are going to put him in a jail. Because I remember there was a time I was speaking for God in a church and one of the prophets called handcuffs so that he can put them in my hands. Right away, God gave me a Bible verse to tell them. Right after reading it to them, they found it as the truth. And then the man told me, please don't blame it on us because if people see you physically, they can't really believe that it's God in you. He also added that there are so many sophisticated people that God can use. And how can God use such a person like you? I heard it as a very challenging word, but I kept quiet. From there, we prayed for two days. And God told us that it is not removed. The next morning, God sent another prophet. And the prophet told us that there is a television which is coming here. God didn't show me so many things about it, but I saw it and started praying for it. I stood up right away and went in the room to pray because at that time, praying in the rooms were allowed. From there, uh, God told me that you are going to start talking about the gospel. And I said, where and how am I going to start teaching or believing about Christ? In the reality, who we believe me, who we trust that it's really God sent me. God replied to me that we, this is the right time that people are going to believe in what you say because what I will tell you will happen right away. And I said, yes. He kept like that. We prayed for a television, but we haven't seen it. And then in the next morning, my children came to me and said, Mama, we saw you having a microphone speaking. I replied to them, you know, in a church, when you are thanking the Lord, they only give you one minute. I think it wouldn't be hard for anyone to speak for one minute and say, I thank God for doing this for me. And you remember, I have thanked the Lord to have taken the bride from my home. And he has taken the bride and he told me after taking the bride, go back to the church and thank me. After thanking like that, all church members laughed at me. They said, I am foolish. My children added, we saw you a uh, journalist asking you so many questions. We saw you talking about gospel. And I said, okay. And from there, I was hopeful. That's where I saw you. Before you came here, God told me about it. After God told me about it, he came to me when we were praying somewhere. We were around 100 people. He asked me to stand up and I stood up. A prophet told me that he listened to what God is telling you. You don't have where you live. You don't have your origin. Since from your first born, people laughed at you. You were disrespected. So to your recent baby born, God is deciding. If you think I'm lying, is there anyone who at least visited you at your home? And I said, no one. And I even remember no one has brought at least one kilogram of sugar. He said, okay. He added, within these past days, you made troubles. And I said, yes. The prophet said, God is coming to visit you. The fourth punishment that God gave me 
He took away my baby boy, but I already knew about it. I kept asking, what is Zawudinsha, what is Zawudinsha? I also kept asking my children because uh, they have smartphones. They also meet people with smartphones. I asked them, do you know what Zawudinsha is? But my children said, we don't know what it is, but we know that people are on YouTube. They use YouTube. And I asked, what about those people who use YouTube? I heard about YouTube, YouTube. What is it? I could hear of these things, but I couldn't care about them. I could think that I was dreaming. Even the prophet could tell me about it, but I could think that it was a dream. I wasn't aware of how this can reach very far. I hope you remember for the first time you came here. I spent almost two hours without speaking any word. I felt very nervous. I could remember that the hospital talked about it. I could remember that God told me that he is coming to visit me and I could speak for him. I could say, this is the truth. I hope you remember for the first time I asked you, when a person speaks on this microphone, do they put her in a jail? And you told me, no, they don't put you in a jail. I was very scared. I think now is the right time to speak for God. I am now fearless. You told us about the fourth punishment. You told us that he, uh, you refused to serve the Lord and he took away your baby and that was the fourth punishment. Yes, that was the fourth punishment. And then what about the fifth one? The fourth punishment, my child got banned. My husband was not at home because he went uh, to serve the Lord. He went to Butade in a place called Induba. That's where he went to prophesy. Then he asked me that he Will you go to church today? I replied to him that he, today I want to go to church because I want to stay with my children. Because there was fire around home and I said, I will stay with my children so that they can't get burned. But I didn't realize that it was the right time for God. My husband replied to me that he, God said you will serve him. But now you are sticking to your children. For your children, you don't even have food to feed them. They only eat once a day. Even at 4 p.m. you can come back and find them safe. And I said, no, I don't want my children to get banned. I remember one of my children got banned when I was with him. He fell in a fire, yet we were together. As he might be behind you, and he fell in fire without even screaming, without even saying anything. Honestly, he didn't say anything. One person who was behind me, he is the one who said, do you know what happened? And I said, what? And he said, the baby fell in fire and now he is burning. Even the person who tried to save my baby, the leg got burned. The person uh, who saved my baby tried to save him, but it, uh, the fingers got burned, even uh, the arm got burned. Before that happened, God told me that now you are on the lessons and we learned so many things. I told you to serve me when things were still good. You refused. And now you will start working for me when things are worse so that you can, you can tell people that I am a powerful God. You will know that I am a jealous God and I don't like people who mix me with fake gods. I told God, why are you talking about fake gods? I don't praise or worship fake gods. And God replied to me that anything you give your time, you spend your much time on, can become your fake god. Children can be fair god, money can be fair god, wealth or treasures can be fair god, anything you base on can be your fair god. Fair gods are not the ones that we pray for or we kneel for. Anything you base on can become your fair God. Later on, I took my child to the first hospital. They couldn't do anything. I could go to private hospitals. They couldn't do anything. I had no insurance. I remember that time I had no insurance. When I called my baby to the hospital, the nurses asked me, do you have insurance? I replied, I haven't. And they said, go back. I remember that time my baby was perished. And the person who cured my baby, God sent me to him and I refused to pray for him or to go there. I said to myself that it, this man is very rich. He will think I may be coming to beg. But at that time, he had a house which was a credit and it was about to get unlocked. He thought maybe the person he bought the house from was the owner, yet he wasn't. Later on, the owner of the house started complaining about it and then he won for it. 
That's when God told me, go and pray for this house. Because the owner of the house did good to you. Without taking much time, we got back the house. And uh, the house is this one we are living in today. Because the man lent it to us so that we can live in it. So I, that was the fourth punishment. What about the fifth? Yes, uh, that was the fourth punishment. Another punishment that I was given, God uh, told me that he now, you still refusing to serve me and said God I'm not really able to serve you the fifth punishment that God gave me God asked me your heart is still closed you don't really want to stand up and start serving me and I said Lord I'm not really able to serve you by that time he passed through the choir God kept telling the choir that there is a bride who was about to pass away the prophet was like the bride is about to pass away he added that you are the ones who are going to give away the bride. And that time, God could come to me and say, I told you to serve me, but you refused. You are going to give away the bride. I could tell myself that he, there is none of my kid who is sick. Am I the one who is going to pass away? And God could tell me that he, you are not the one who is going to pass away, but I told you to serve me. You refused. I felt nervous. We prayed as a choir on Saturday. On Sunday evening, God came to me and told me that he, the bride is going to pass away and you're going to give her away. He added that on Tuesday, they will come to bury the bride. I felt very nervous and I spoke to my husband. I told him that God kept telling us in the choir that there is a bride who is going to pass away and God told me that I am the one who is going to give away the bride. I added that maybe it's because I refuse to serve the Lord. I spoke to my husband, may you please allow me and you to serve the Lord. My husband added, you are the specific person that God wants to serve him. Why wouldn't you allow that? I could talk to myself how uh, people do not believe everything I say, but my husband told me that, he, why don't you trust yourself? Is there anything that God told you which hasn't ever happened? My husband added, why do you fake yourself? From that time, I kept quiet. In the next morning, my baby got sick. I remember it was Monday morning. We sat together and my baby told me that he, Mama, hi. And I said, hi. Why did you refuse to serve the Lord? I replied to my baby that I haven't refused to serve the Lord. I added, see what you're wearing. See what I'm wearing. Do you think people can believe in what I say? The baby said, okay. Right after that, the baby told me that, he, Mommy, I have a headache. Listen, my baby died right after way. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He just died next to me when we were together. He died after telling me all that. I even had people to be my proof. There were men here that can be my proof. The men were working on the boss's house. I ran to them and they told them that my baby is dead, but they couldn't believe me. They said, Mama Eric, you don't really know what you're saying. They also added, in our days, servants of God are crazy, are foolish. They kept telling me that you don't really know what you're saying. The baby was with us. He didn't go anywhere. And now he's dead. Isn't that baby who was drinking a tea? And they replied to them that he was the one who was drinking a black tea. They told me, why did you give him the black tea? And I replied to them that that's the only thing we had because we haven't eaten last night and the baby was very hungry. I continued by saying I had nothing. I only had 100 in my pocket and what I was able to buy was sugar uh, to make a tea. I also added after my baby drinking a black tea, he immediately slept. They asked me, he is sleeping. And I said, yes, he is sleeping, but he's not breathing. They all came to see him. And his daddy told me that he, do you know the cause of all this? And I said, I don't really know. This is because you refuse to serve me. This is what God is trying to show you. As we are wrapping up, that was the fifth punishment. The sixth punishment that God gave me, he told me that you refuse to serve me because you see your husband. There is something that I'm going to do. I am going to do something. You will allow that I am a powerful God. God told me that when I was five months pregnant. After being told that, I told my husband that God told me that he is coming to visit this house. 
He is coming at home. And I saw God having a pistol or a gun. God told me that he is coming for you. God told me that I am going to give a guarantee to your husband so that you will never and ever basing on him or expecting him to feed you. I immediately got traumatized after being told that, but God told me that don't worry. I am not going to kill your husband. I only want you to serve me and now allow Zawunisha. I could hear of Zawunisha and I could ask myself, what is Zawunisha? What is Zawunisha? I also asked God to explain to me what Zawunisha is. I was very confused. I kept asking my children, especially my firstborn, Eric, that Eric, may you keep following and let me know what Zawunisha is. Eric would reply to me that Mama, would I be able to know what Zawunisha is? He could also add that I have no idea about what Zawunisha is. Then my husband, after being told that, and the next morning, my husband got broken. I already knew it because my husband, before he left my home, he told me that he, I am leaving, but he don't expect me to see or to come back the way I went. Right after hearing that my husband was broken, I was really confused. I had no food, no clothes, no everything. I could ask myself, how am I going to survive? And God told me that he, remove your eyes on your husband. Don't base on him. Now I am talking to any person who is now basing on things here on the earth. If you don't remove your eyes on the things and look up to Christ, look up to heaven, that's what I'm telling you. I am not telling you this for the sake of just saying it. I'm just saying it because God told me that he speak it, say it wherever you will go. Because all the things you see around will finish and we shall remain praising, speaking about gospel. God did this to me so that I will base on it and let people know that God can do anything without basing on anything else. After my husband got broken, God came to me and told me that he, don't worry, I will give you everything, but I want to do something so that you will see and realize that he, it's not because of your efforts. I want to do things. I want to change things. I want to do things to let people know or to show people who pretend that they work for me or they serve me that they are wrong, they do nothing. They will realize that I am a powerful God. My husband got broken. As you see, he doesn't have teeth. And I remember God could tell him that he, I am coming to visit you. Please be eyes, you know, be attentive. Be attentive that I'm coming to visit you. That's how God visited him. Her arms can't even lift five kilograms. The baby can even fall down, but he can't be able to carry him. So that's what I was talking about. So that's when I decided to stand up and start serving the Lord. I remember I came back from Kibagabaga because that's where I was given a birth. And I said, honestly, now I can receive the new Pisam or Zawunisha. People asked me, what are you talking about? What? What is Zawunisha? And I said, now I want it. And right after that, I received your call. I felt very nervous. And as you remember, for the first time you came here, I told you, if you are not two men, if you don't have cameras, tripods, if you don't have microphones, I will not talk to you. Because God can't get confused. He told me two men, not three men. He told me about camera tripods. If you don't have them, I'm not going to say anything with you. You replied to me that we have all that. I didn't prepare you to come here. You even didn't know where I live. All these were guided by Holy Spirit. And you even saw that it's really God who guided you to come here. And you passed on the message and um, it reached everywhere. Oh my goodness. Honestly, as I am speaking in front of God in heaven, me, Emeline Mukamana, and Fidel, my husband, we have never bought a sack of rice by ourselves. Since you were born, after serving the Lord, after speaking about the gospel, God gave me food. Oh my goodness. He even told me that he will give clothes to my children. He even said that I will also give you clothes. And now you look smart. Obviously. Do I look the way I looked before? 
No, 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 no. God gave me food. Oh my goodness. I came here carrying a sack of lies that I bought by myself. And I spoke to my neighbors that he, honestly, this is God. Honestly, now I am very excited. Even though he can send me to a person to tell that person that he is about to die, I will go there and I will speak it as it is. But I think you may be having another way of, you know, speaking about it, not being direct and tell a person that you're about to die. No, 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 no. How may I speak it? Imagine if God sends me to a person to tell that person that God is coming to beat you. Would I say that God is coming to visit you? No, 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 no. I would say it as it is. And now have you passed on the message that God gave you? Honestly, because I was still nervous, I would say that in the first part of the testimony and the second part of the testimony, I didn't say everything because I was still nervous of uh, speaking on the microphone. I could even transpirate. I had no way to speak about it. But at least you've heard of people saying that your message healed them. Oh my goodness, there are so many people who have called me. Personally, there are around 800 people who have called me uh, to ask me to pray for them or to pray with them. There are more than that. And uh, there are also others who haven't even called you, yet God visited them. Yes, there are so many families that God liberates and also strengthened. There are so many people who have just called me, we prayed, and uh, sometimes God could give me some information, I deliver it to them, they could get saved. There are so many people. And now you've realized that what you've been refusing to do was uh, one of the ways of God to save people or to heal people. Yes, yes, I have realized it. So are you now regretting for the time you've wasted without serving the Lord? Don't speak about it. Oh my goodness, don't speak about it. I really regret the time I spent uh, working for Satan or refusing to work for the Lord. And now I ask the Lord to allow me to be able to serve him and to also use the time that I wasted. I may also ask you to be my ambassador. Be my good ambassador, be a good ambassador so that we can work hands in hands to spread news about gospel. But I think so far I try. Yeah, you are right. You try. You really try. Yeah, now you really try. But I would like to let you know that in nowadays, God doesn't want people who pretend or say that they like God on their lips only. Yet that is not on their heart. God wants people to speak for him and to also get saved. Now here are some of the Bible verses or Bible words that I was given. Within the first few days, I prayed. No, before you deliver the message, now we were talking about all these things to show people that you were given a message and you had to speak it the way you were given it because God doesn't lack sophisticated people to use. We started by talking about uh, some of the punishments that God gave you because you refused to listen to him or to accept him using you. I would say that it was not a wasted time. It wasn't a wasted time. We wanted to let people know that what you were given was not just for nothing. You were given it so that you can heal people's hearts. Now we are going to give you the time to speak or to deliver on the message that you were given. We've been staying at home. We believe that you've been praying. You've been praying different prayers. You will deliver the message as you were given it. But you will start uh, by telling us where were you when you received this message? What, what kind of situation were you in? When God visited you and gave you this message, where were you, so that people can get to understand where we're given this message. Before we start, I would like to receive uh, the servant of God so that he can pray for you. After praying for you, then you will go on by pressing on the message. Dear Father in heaven, this is your servant and she's going to speak for you. It's what you place in her heart, not what she placed in her heart by herself. Let her be your material. Let her speak fearlessly and openly and also people who are going to listen to this message may honor you and give you a praise we thank you for supporting her in everything we pray in the name of jesus 
Amen. Now you are most welcome to pass on the message that God gave you. But before you pass it on, we would like to know where were you given this message? Where were you? When was that when God visited you and gave you this message? How many days have you prayed? So that we can first understand how it all started. Me, myself... When God visited me, you see, for the first time, I prayed and God gave me some information. Within past few days, when we entered into lockdown, I was very nervous, but I prayed and God gave me some words from the Bible. I will be able to read the Bible verses for people. Some of the people we've been able to talk, I tried to give them the words that God gave me, but not all of them because there are also other people that I haven't been able to talk to. Because I felt very nervous, I was scared, I couldn't be able to figure out what it was. Then, after being told that we are going to stay home, I took my time and prayed. Because you know, for people to understand and accept what you're telling them, you first need to pray for their hearts. Because they have so many things which are against them. You just need to pray and send so many angels from heaven to come and fight for them so that they can receive well the gospel message. I prayed for seven days and I said within these seven days, I will not eat. My children were very supportive. My husband also accepted to work with me, to pray with me so that we can be able to ask God the news or information about the people we were praying for. I could pray for three people and God could give me some information and he could tell me that you go and pass on this information. I could ask how. I could ask how and why this. But everything that God told me, he told it to me through the Bible verses. I would also say that if I was given almost 15 Bible verses, I couldn't be able to speak about them without reading them. That wouldn't make any sense. Because I could pray and God could give me a Bible verse. When I prayed, God could tell me, go and say this. But later on, I kept quiet. I kept quiet and God came to me and asked me, did this that wouldn't come. I said, yes, it came here. And God asked me, did you pass on the message I gave you? It was within this month because I started praying in a period of staying home. I kept praying and there are so many miracles that God made. I saw God healing. I saw God working. I saw God changing things. And this made me have hope in Christ. God gave me words I will be reading, but I will not explain them. So before we reach there, I would also like you to tell us where were you received this message from? Were you in the room praying? Were you outside? Were you in a forest? Where were you to receive this message? Me, people will excuse me because we pray in different ways. And the first thing was to respect rules and regression from the government. I haven't gone with anyone else, no one. It was me and my husband. We could go and hide ourselves at the night. We could ask God some information. When will this end? What is these things? What about those who follow your ways? What about those who don't follow your ways? And God could give us information. There are so many things that God gave us. We could pray inside and outside here at home. We could even spend the whole night sitting here asking God about information so that we could avoid the hotness from uh, inside of the house that could make us feel asleep. We could come outside to have a fresh air. We could spend the whole night praying to God, asking God about some information. We could also go back inside, inside of the house. We could pray from there. We were not with anyone else. It was me, my children and my husband. We kept praying, praying, and God gave us some information. And what is necessary is that it's God's words. It's God's Bible verses. I spoke to God that if you don't give me a word which is written, I won't be able to say anything. Because telling people or preaching to people by saying that God said this without having anywhere it is written, yet everything is written in the Bible, I told God, 
give me where it is written. Now you are most welcome to give us the message you were given. Yes, I am going to pass on the message, the first Bible verse. People who are following me or who are listening to me, please excuse me. I only started in primary one. Even everything I say, it's God who keep telling me, swallow this word. But by myself, even though I could go to the market to buy something for five thousands, I couldn't be able to buy it. I could go back home without buying anything. I would request people to bear with me because I don't read well. If you hear me not reading well, please take your Bible too and read with me. I will explain the way I'm capable of doing it. I was written everything because I couldn't memorize all these Bible verses. I remember so many things, but as you understand, I can't memorize everything. God told me so many things and I could write them down. God gave me some categories. The first main thing, I haven't talked about it in the third message. I saw a Caesar. God said that he people People haven't done everything he told them to do. They destroyed laws. God told me that he is going to pass a pair of scissors in the stomach of all people who pretend that they are speaking for God or they are saying what God said, yet God didn't say anything. People in the choir who sing without honest with only hypocrites. God is coming for leaders who lie. For Christians who do not obey God's ways, God is coming for them. I can't talk about rich people. That's the Bible verse that God ended with. The main reason I kept delaying in delivering this message, God could give me some Bible verses and he couldn't explain to me why and how that I can deliver it. I kept praying and asking God, why are you giving me this Bible? Bible verses. What is this and what does it mean? It's rich to rich people and I will be able to read for them the Bible verses and I hope every category will find itself in these Bible verses. And also God told me that everything which is not assured in heaven, God is coming for it. God is done with people. He is about to evaluate wealth and treasures. That's what God told me. Let us now read the Bible verse. The first Bible verse that we are going to read, we are going to read in the Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 up to verse 9. I want to read this verse because it's for people who are married. If you are married, go and read this verse. It's Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 up to verse 9. May God bless you. I hope now you will be able to read this Bible verse by yourself. Now let's move on on the Genesis chapter 18 verse 23 up to verse 33. We are reading this Bible verse, the Genesis chapter 18 verse 23. We are going to read the whole chapter. Let us read. It says, Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away, not as spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. We know the judge of all the earth do right. Here, God was about to visit Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord said, If I found 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find forty people there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty are found there? He said, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found there? He said, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, 
For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Now we are moving to the Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. Here God was also visiting Sodom and Gomorrah cities. Here God told me. He gave me this word and I sat down so I can be able to think about it. God told me that you see this city, Sodom and Gomorrah. God can't reach a place without first visiting it. God visits the place and also sends signs. God sends signs, but people haven't seen them. God told me that his sins are much more increasing in the world. I asked him how and why because I thought people are staying home and I thought there are no sins. From there, God showed me all youth, young people, men and women, girls and boys falling in Nyabarongo River. After saw the youth falling in Nyabarongo River, I asked about what I was seeing. God told me that you first see what people are doing. I immediately saw people fetching water from the river. They were fetching water from the river. There were a source of water which had no water. Sources of water had no water. There was only Nyabarongo River. I immediately saw girls falling in Nyabarongo River, boys falling in Nyabarongo River, old people, women and men falling in Nyabarongo River. And I could ask God about what I was seeing. That's when God gave me this word of Sodom and Gomorrah. Instead of people saving themselves or cleaning up themselves, they are much more involving in doing sins. And God told them that he is about to test them. There is a tester in front of them. I passed on this message. Now people are not being tested. God is asking you, do you know day and time? God is asking you, do you know day and time. Girls are getting married wrongly. Boys are getting married wrongly. There is too much adultery. I thought during this period of Gumamurugo or staying at home, there is no adultery. God have seen this in heaven and got angry. Instead of people sitting at home uh, to cry for their souls, to cry for their lives, they are going out to have sex. During this period of Sodom, men could sleep with other men. Women could sleep with other women. Young people could also bring other young people to have sex with them. They could say it's their right, but they were destroying God's law. That is why God is still angry. God is angry. It's not over. God is still angry because if the Bible verse says that he, all kneels will kneel for me, you keep looking up to the heaven, not just believing in fact gods. Look up to heaven. Stop believing or praising fake gods. And every person who will listen to this message and turn back, save and clean up by themselves, cry for the Lord, call for the Lord. The Bible verse says that when Ezekiel heard of that he's about to die from Isaiah, he was requested to give his house as an inheritance because he was about to pass away. Ezekiel didn't say anything to Isaiah right after that. He waited until Isaiah left. After he left, Ezekiel turned up. He cried for the Lord and told the Lord, don't you remember that I did good? I spread news about gospel uh, in front of you. Why this? Ezekiel called for the Lord and the Lord came down. He came down and told Ezekiel, now I remember. God sent back Isaiah before he reached in the city. Go back to Ezekiel and tell him that he, now I have have added years on your life. And in nowadays, people get sick and start saying, there is no God. God, you're not here. God is here. But angels came to evaluate people's hearts, but they found them closed. People are being tested by their own found feet, and God wouldn't be able to know how much they are weighing. Now the tester is evaluating. People couldn't see it. They are now busy. They are busy doing nothing. They kept quiet. What's wrong? God is very angry. God wants people to get saved. God wants pastors to get saved. God wants pastors to get saved. God wants apostles to get saved. Those, um, God wants those who haven't heard of him to know him. He wants them to get saved. You should not base on your wealth because your wealth or treasures will never see heaven. Your heart, after this body getting perished, our soul is what we see heaven. That's not what we see heaven. God is very angry. There is another Bible verse that I was given. 
in Isaiah. No, I haven't reached the Isaiah. Now we are still in the Genesis. I think I read this Bible verse up to verse 14. You may read it by yourself. Now we are going to read the Bible verse in Isaiah chapter 24. Verse 1. I was given this word during past few days. There are so many people that I gave this word to. If you haven't received this word, I am going to read it for you. Because there are so many people that I gave this word to. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1 up to verse 22. Let us read it. Bible is the only word which is not mixed. I'm not going to tell you that God said this, yet it's not written in the Bible. It's really good because when God gives me something, I also ask him where it is written in the Bible because everything was written and God knows it. God knows everything which will happen to you. Let us read the Bible verse in Isaiah chapter 24. We are starting from the verse 1 up to verse 22. It says, See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. It will be the same for priests as for people, for the master as for his servant, for the mistress as for her servant, for seller as for buyer, for borrower as for lender, for debtor as for creditor. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. The Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers, the world languishes and withers. The heavens languishes with the earth. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statuses, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilty. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. This is the laws that you will find in the Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 up to verse 9. To those who are listening to me, the world is dries up because its population not obeying God's laws. God told me that all the laws were made by God. Any law which was changed, he wrote them down. We shall read them. God told me that if for people after being defiled, they married men to men, they married women to women. They took women and advised them wrongly. You can find this in the Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 up to verse 9. I want to read this verse. You will also find this in the Genesis chapter 38. Chapter 38 verse 6 up to verse 12. There you will find this law of Isaiah. If you destroy this law, you will immediately understand it. You can also read verse 3 up to verse 6. Here it says they have disobeyed the laws, violated the statuses, and blocking the everlasting covenant. These are two covenants that we have read. Here God told me that if people have disobeyed laws and they have violated the everlasting covenant, which God promised our grandfathers like Abraham, the laws that Isaiah followed, the laws that God gave Israel, when he came from Egypt. To whom who is reading this? Either Presta, if you want to do a heroic action with God, go back and read the Bible from the Genesis up to Exodus. If you follow this and you see you were working with God, in few days coming, you will sit together with God and share the meal. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the status cells, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. This is why a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilty. Earth's inhabitants are bound up and very few are left. Disobeying the laws is the main reason this earth is cursed. The world is cursed. To white people who are listening, evaluate yourself and see if you are not disobeying God's laws. For black people, evaluate yourself too and see if you are following God's ways. Honestly, God didn't create us for worse things. God created us to live in the paradise. That's what the Bible says. It says, for those who obey the law and do the right things, their rewards are richness, respect, and everlasting life. If all these things are given from the Lord, they are everlasting. Glory to God. Let us continue from where we stopped. It says, The new wine dries up and the vine withers. 
all the merrymakers groan. The joyful tremors are stilled. The noise of the reviewers has stopped. The joyful harp is silent. No longer do they drink wine with a song. The joyful harp is silent. Yes, the joyful harp is silent because this is very true. There is no way people are dancing or singing by saying, God, we do miracles for us. They are dancing for nothing. And God sends me to tell people that he is not a God for fake dancing. God wants people to tell other people to clean up their souls, tell people the truth, tell them to save their lives. It doesn't really matter for you to start dancing from the morning up to 11 p.m. and then you say God said we should go home. God is tired of that. God wants sinners to get saved. God wants people who are doing adultery to get saved. If I was saved by the word, when I got saved, they preached a word in a church. God had told me that he, imagine where would you go if you die. After getting married, I went to church with my husband. After sitting in a church, they preached as a word, a strong word, and I got burned up. I imagine immediately stood up and said, I want to get baptized, yet I was already baptized. They replied to me that you are already baptized, but I said, I want to do it again. Then they told me that there is no problem. Go and make your name written. May God bless you. God wants people to make other people get self, tell people about their sins, read for them the Bible because the Bible doesn't change. God told me that the laws for the earth can change, but God's laws can't change. The main reason why the world's laws change is because kingdom also change. If a leader is leading a sector today, he will come up with his own laws. If he gets repressed, the person who repress him will also come up with his new laws. But since the world was created, God told me that he doesn't change the way he was before is how he is today. He doesn't change and that makes the laws to not change. The owner of the laws is still alive. He didn't tell anyone to change the laws, but people change the laws, they glorified what was a sin and made it the right thing. They took sins and glorified them. Where did God tell you that? Where did God tell you that a woman can sleep with another woman? Where did God say that a person can sleep with an animal? It is so sad and God is so angry. And now you're saying that God can use his arm to save the world. God didn't give me any hope. I will read that for you in Revelation. For the people who believe that God will change the world into paradise. Before you come back from the sins, it will never happen. It will never happen, but God will never destroy the righteous people with the wicked ones. Don't expect that. Even though we help you to stay at home, what's coming we shall never help you. We shall never help you. God told me that we shall never help you. Rich people are going to get troubled. The poor people are going to be given a say. The weak people are going to get troubled alone. This was a sign because because we helped you. Stop having sex with dogs. Imagine a dog, a thing that God created. God is so angry. Listen to what makes God angry. Take your precious baby and you buy a dog. You give a birth to a baby, to a precious baby, and you give the baby to a dog to take care of them. Imagine a dog. God told me that he has created everything by word. But what makes him angry is how he has created a person with his hands by the they are the ones who are making him angry. They are taking precious things to a dog. God is so angry. It is so sad. Please turn back. God wants you to turn back and get saved. May God bless you. We continue to read from verse 8. It says, The joyful trembles are stilled. The noise of the rivers has stopped. The joyful harp is silent. And on the verse 9 it says, No longer do they drink wine with a song. The beer is bitter to its drinkers. Their wind city lies desolate. The entrance to every house is buried. In the streets, they cry out for wine. All joy turns to gloom. All joyful sounds are banished from the earth. The city is left in ruins. Its gate is battered to pieces. So will it be on the earth? And among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten, all as when gleanings are left after the grape harvest. 
They raise their voices, they shout for joy. From the west, they acclaim the Lord's majesty. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the islands of the sea. From the ends of the earth, we hear singing, Glory to the righteous one. But I said, I waste away. Woe to me, the treacherous betray, treacherous, the treacherous betray. Glory to God. The righteous will be saved. Glory to God. If the righteous people are not praising the Lord, now they are busy doing their own things. They kept quiet. Who will do it? God told me that I am the one who is coming to do it. And those who are not attentive, those who are not focused, they are going to get troubles. Since people start to disobey God's laws, God can tell a person about a house and then he takes the materials to use on the boss's house and then he takes them to breed his own house. If God told you that he will lift you up and gives you a house, that is stealing. God tells you that you will get a nice Charcoal. You steal others' charcoal and you bring them into your house. That's stealing. God tells you to give you a very big house. When you are given a job as an engineer, you take other people's materials into your house. Then you keep saying, God said, God said. God is tired of people who are stealing. God doesn't like people who steal. If God tells you that he will give you a house, there are so many ways that he will use apart from stealing. If God tells you that you will paint your house, You will not paint your house by using my own paintings. You will put on your own painting, and God is tired of those kind of stealers. There are such kind of people in churches. God tells you that I will lift you up, and you still so you can be lifted up. And God is coming to work on everything he didn't talk about. If he told you that he will give you a house and you got it by stealing, God is coming to take it away. Don't cry. It might even be a doll from that. Don't come complain that God is bad because God is not bad. God can kill and also gives life. I will also read this Bible verse. As we are wrapping up, let us continue by reading the verse in Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. We are starting from the verse 13. You will bear with me because there are so many things that God gave me, but I couldn't memorize everything. I tried to write them down and now we are going to read in the Isaiah chapter 29 from verse 13. It says, The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore, once more I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? You turn things upside down as if they put away thoughts to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, You know nothing. Glory to God. Here God is asking people who go to darkness places. They do bad things and then they say God is not seeing us. Whatever can do, either politics, either betraying someone, no one is seeing us. But God is watching. God is seeing. God has seen you and laughed at you. And he said he's going to perish intelligence of the intelligent. And he said the intelligence of the intelligent is going to be hidden. Things are going to be hidden from them. Glory to God. Let us continue by reading from verse 17. It says, In a very short time will not Lebanon be turned into a fertile field, and the fertile fields seem like a forest. In that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see, once more the humble will rejoice in the Lord. The needy will rejoice in the holy of one of Israel. The ruthless will vanish, the mockers will disappear, and all who have an eye for evil will be cut down. Those who with the word make someone out to be guilty, who unsell the defender in court, 
and with false testimony deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore, this is what the Lord who redeemed Abraham says to the descendants, descendants of Jacob. No longer will Jacob be ashamed, no longer will their faces grow pale when they see among them their children the work of my hands, they will keep my name holy, they will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob, and we stand in awe of the God of Israel. Those who are wayward in spirit will gain understanding, those who complain will accept instruction. Here it says that those who complain about getting instructions, they will accept the instructions after seeing that the intelligence of the intelligent is perished, is vanished. Any person who will turn back, he will walk with the Lord. There is also another verse that I was given, it's chapter 26, when I was asked about these things. I will also read it for you, it's chapter 26, verse 20. I asked the Lord about these things because I couldn't see the end of these things, and he gave me this word, he said, Go, go, my people, into your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. The earth we conceal, it's slain no longer. I was given this word when we were praying for this period. Glory to God. Now we are going to read in Malash. We are going to read in Malash chapter 2. And here I am still talking about the prophets. The prophets of God who destroyed the laws, who disobeyed the laws. For this word to get peace, it will require everyone, wherever you are, to be God's ambassador. After being an ambassador, tell a gay that what you're doing is wrong. You tell the adultery that what you're doing is not right. Stop seeing things and keep quiet. Stop saying that I don't care. Be God's ambassador and what you are supposed to do. If a person in a bar markets what he does, you can also market who you work for everywhere. If I say it, go and tell other people that there is a good message, a good news from heaven that I got. There is what heaven wants from us. If you are a preacher, tell the church that there is what heaven wants from us. The heaven wants us to turn back, to turn back and speak the truth. This word is full of prophets who prophesy wrong things, and it's God's spirit. There is where I was given this word, I will be able to read it for you. People are lying that it's Holy Spirit, and people go and sit somewhere and say, I am sitting on promises, yet they have already sold their origin lands. Can you go back to your origin? in land when you've already sold it. Can you complain about that? You can't complain. Please don't sell your origin lands. May God bless you. Let's now read in Malash. I am still talking about the prophets. If I talk about prophets, you are among them. It doesn't matter if you got saved. You are also a prophet. May God bless us. That's what I have been saying. God has passed a pair of scissors in the stomach, but they haven't seen it. We are reading Malash chapter 2. 2 verse 4 up to verse 9 where it says and you will know that I have sent you this warning so that my covenant with Lev may continue says the Lord Almighty my covenant was with him a covenant of life and peace and I gave them to him this called for reverence and he revered me and stood in awe of my name true instruction was in his mouth and nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and turned many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with Lev, says the Lord Almighty. So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people because... 
You have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. I was given this word for people of God. This is what I'm telling you, that if you be focused, you are going to eat. If you be focused, you are going to work with the Lord, a heroic action. God got angry. Either prophets and people in the choir, Christians or people in the church, people might think that God loves suits than hearts. God doesn't like suits than hearts. God wants humble hearts in front of him. People are now considering respect to be for suits. But God told me that he will never exchange his respect for anything else. No matter what, God will never exchange his respect for anything else. People are now saying they serve Lord on lips only. No one is humble to get saved. No, 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 no. You can't tell a prophet to get saved. You can't touch an apostle. Even if you see them sinning, you can't touch them. But God is the owner of the respect, and he wants a humble heart. God loved David because he had a humble heart. God loved Saul because he was blaming his people. And then when he met with Jesus, Jesus said to him, Why are you killing me? Why are you challenging me? From there, Saul changed into Paul. However, in nowadays, people are changing from being Paul to Saul. People are coming from Israel to Jacob. Honestly, this is so sad. Instead of being God's ambassador, you are being an ambassador to harass God. God is angry. God has too much sorrow. Let me advise you. God told me that everywhere you are sitting, be God's ambassador so that God can come and you do heroic actions so that you can do something acknowledged, something good. Don't advise people wrongly because if you advise people wrongly, that will be your burden. Let's now read another Bible verse so that we can move on quickly. We are now going to read in Micah chapter 2 verse 4 up to verse 9. I was surprised by how God repeated this word for me. He repeated it and I couldn't understand it. But for me to read this chapter, it's not because it's the nicest chapter in the Bible, but it's because it's what God gave me. I say what God told me. Let's now read it. The word says, then I said, Listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, should you not embarrass justice? You who hate good and love evil, who tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin and break their bones in pieces, who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot. Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time, he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. This is what the Lord says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but people to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Therefore, night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination. The sun we set for the prophets on the day we go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners will be disgraced. They will all cover their faces because there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and mighty, to declare to Jacob his transgression, to Israel his sin. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who breed design with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. I am still talking about the prophets. The main purpose of this word is that if you want to have a hope for the future, ask the Lord where your name is written. To those church leaders, I am sorry, I am talking about what God told me. This is what God told me. I am not lying. I am not pretending. And most of the things that I have talked about are already happening. Because uh, before all churches get closed, God told me that he is going to close them with young lions. To every church, 
I am going to put on a lioness. Now you can't go to church. Churches are closed and it's God who closed. God said, cover your mouth because nothing comes from your mouth which is right. Now I am asking you, are you evaluating yourself where you are sitting? Are you evaluating yourself and say, is my heart impressing the Lord? This word from Mika chapter 3, go and read it. Go read it up to verse 9, from verse 1 up to verse 9. Ask your heart, because for me, when uh, there is no stick, I can't say anything. But now I am seeing more than one sign that God is with me. I couldn't be able to speak about this. But now I am speaking it so the world would know what God wants. You will go to witches, but you will never find God there. Witches will be blind. They will turn into stupid because there is nothing right they say. Now prophets are prophesying things which are wrong, which was like those things for her. Sometimes uh, prophets prophesy to people that God gives you peace. But for me, when I see it, I see no peace. And prophets tells me, you shut up. You you keep quiet. So what should we do? A person could come to you and he sees sins in you, but because you want something from that person, you tell him something good so that you can get what to eat. Mama Eric, I will never work for something to eat. I will eat because God said it. I will get clothes because I am supposed to get clothes. I will get clothes because God uh, told to someone to give me clothes. But I will never and ever get clothes by lying people that God said, yet God didn't say anything. Anything. No, 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 no. I will never do it. I will say what God said. You will never say that Mama Eric needs to wear clothes because he preached to me or he prophesied to me. No, 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 no. I'm not the one who prophesies. It's God in me. Today, God told me that he is going to cover a cloth in the head of prophets so that whatever they will prophesy will never happen. But among the prophets, God told me that I am Mika. If you think I'm lying, the Bible has curse and blessing. God told me that I am Mika, and I feel it. Now, uh, glory to God. Here, Lord says, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and desort all that is right, who breathes down with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. People are now prophesizing and tell people, God is going to do something for you, yet God didn't say anything. When God tells me to preach about something, he also gives me where it is written in the Bible. Because I ask the Lord, if you are about to do something good for this person and you say their lives are all written in the Bible, where is it written? When God gives me a word, I give it to you. I tell you, this is the word from God. He will do better for you. If you are a sinner, God tells me, go and read for them here because they are not easy to be convinced. I ask you, why don't you get what God says? Read this Bible verse and it is going to judge you. But don't tell people that God said something, yet he didn't say anything. Now God has talked about the prophets. If I'll tell you that God talked about the prophets without reading it in the Bible, maybe you will not accept it. If you are an apostle, please allow to cover yourself on Jesus Christ. We are now on Caesars of people who are looking for offers. They are looking for offers and there are so many people who are hungry. There are so many hungry people out there. Let me give you some Bible verses and I will not read them for you. Read in the Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24 up to verse 27. Read in the Proverbs again chapter 28 verse 26 up to verse 28. Go read those Bible verses. If you hear that there is nothing judging you or, you know, making you feel weak, God is with you. You've eaten offers from the poor people and you say poor people are for the government. God is very angry, has too much sorrow, and he is coming to make you hungry. You are getting hungry and you feel how it feels. You will see how to have nothing to your hearts. One day I went to pass on a message to a girl and she told me that Imama Eric, poor people look like crazy people. That's what she told me. And then God told me that he go back, let her know my word. You will get clothes, you will eat, 
before her eating or having clauses. She told me that she has master's degree. For the people who are listening to me with the master's degree, God doesn't care about your master's degree, really. You can have a lot of money, but you lack peace and you get suicide, yet you have money. Money can't heal you. God is angry. God has too much sorrow. God was very jealous when he gave me this word. God was really sad and had too much sorrow. And now people are saying God is working no, God is busy looking for forging things. And after looking for forging things, I will also go for wealth and treasures. So what I didn't talk about, or if your treasures or wealth is not assured in heaven, I will read for you this Bible verse. I will not talk about what's in my mind. There are so many things in my mind. I will read for you what God gave me. After reading Mika, now we are going to read the Bible verse in Ezekiel. We are going back to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16, up to verse 20. Please love me and I love you back. Please love me back because all this that I'm telling you is not coming from my heart. That's what God gave me to tell you. There are so many things, there are a lot, but allow me to tell you what God gave me. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16, it says, At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their lives, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person, and they do not turn from their weakness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved yourself. Again, when a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before them, they will die. Since you did not warn them, they will die for their sin. The righteous things that person did will not be remembered. Here I am still talking about the prophets. I'm still talking about the people of God. Everywhere you might be, you are a person of God. You are a child of God. Everyone is a person of God. When you feed a person, you are feeding the Lord. When you make someone having clothes, you are serving the Lord. When you find a person on the street and then you lift that person up, you are serving the Lord. God has so much work to do for him. Serving the Lord is not only going to church and keep singing like that and you keep pretending or lying to people that you are serving the Lord. And when you see the prophet, you start saying, but now we need money. Listen to what is making God angry and so sad. God should have never closed the churches because he was capable of not making this happen. He should have stopped it, but who should do it? The prophet may come and tell the church, now you are about to get saved. But if I tell them to get saved, they are not going to give me money. They will not offer the money. That's why the prophets keep telling the church that he, now we need money to build the house. Now we need money to do this and that. That's how in nowadays people are preaching. So now ask yourself, are you speaking what the Lord wants? God will punish us. God is coming to punish people. God is going to bring back Davids from the forests. God is about to bring back Davids who are fighting with the lions. Instead of you sitting at home in suits and God said he doesn't work in theology. Don't find God in books. This book is the Holy Spirit. It was breathed by the Lord. Even though they might write so many books to repress this book, but it will never be repressed and that's what I have been saying that people are trying to change laws. Thank you Lord thank you to have allowed me to speak for you yet people have told me that I will never speak for the Lord because I haven't started and now what I'm saying is touching the whole world. Glory to God now we were praying this Bible verse and if you try to read this Bible verse make sure you understand it make sure you explain it by yourself we also continue to read the Bible verse in Ezekiel chapter 26 verse 29 that's where we are in ezekiel chapter 3 verse 27 up to verse 29 the bible verse says but when i speak with you i will open your mouth and you shall say to them that says the lord god he who will hear 
let him hear. And he who will refuse to hear, let him refuse for their Eriberia's house. This Bible verse goes to people who do not want to speak for the Lord. You don't want to speak for the Lord, yet for me I started speaking for the Lord after being beaten. Tell them to know, because even God knows that it's Eriberia's house, they can't get convinced. They have turned working for the Lord as a business. They don't want a lot of people to get saved. They only want so many people to offer the money. When you enter in the church without money, you will never give an essay. And Jesus told me that everywhere he reached, he couldn't care about people who were familiar to him. The way you could come, he could receive you the way you are, not even caring about where you are coming. He could receive you the way you are. Glory to God. Let's continue by reading the Bible verses that I was given. And after that, I will also give you a song that also God gave me to give you. We are now going to read in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 25. That's where we are reading. Then we shall continue with another Bible verse. Dear listeners, I would request for your attention because I know through this word there is your blessing that it will make ways after this period of staying at home. Be black, be white. You will keep walking fearlessly and say, I saw God doing miracles. I saw God working in my life. We are reading in Hebrew chapter 12. We are starting from the verse 25 up to the verse 27. On verse 25, it says, See it to that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who want them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. God wants us to work for Him, but also fear Him. If He did not forgive the ancestors, if God did not forgive our grandfathers, our grandparents, He opened up the soul to sorrow them. Do you think He will forgive us? God wants to remove everything which can be shaken and remain with those which cannot be shaken. God is a consuming consuming fire and we need to work for him while we fear him and we be shaken for him. People in nowadays are not shaken by hearing that God said something, yet he didn't say anything. Christians are not fearing of going to witches. People in nowadays are not scared of lying, which is one of the sins that God hates so much. God is going to punish you. God is going to perish everyone. When I talk about this, I feel like I don't have enough words to say it because I know it is very strong. I remember I remember how I was beaten, how I was struggled, how I was troubled. I don't really know what to say right now, but if you are a hero, now start following God's ways and he will serve you. Now we are going to read in Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. It says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come to the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. On verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. Then you, Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from God, and I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Glory to God. As you can understand, God has a plan to do good for us, but if for only those who will be very focused or attentive. Glory to God. God wants us to be focused, to be eyes, and God gave me all these things within seven days when I 
I was praying. There reached a time when I say that I'm not really getting what God wants me to say or to do. And that made me took two extra days so that I can pray for this and get to know what it is. I also kept telling God, God, maybe we should now hold on so that we can maybe talk about it later. And God said, no, stand up right now and talk about it. I want you to talk about it. So for you to be here, it's God's plan. Let me now read another Bible verse. It's in Ezekiel chapter 18. This Bible verse goes to people of God. Please bear with me because now I'm reading the Bible verses. I'm not giving my own testimony. I am reading the Bible verse in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1. It says, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer call this proverb in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parents as well as the child, both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just right. He does not eat at the mountain shyness or look the idols of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relations with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone, but returns what he took in pledge for alone. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the next. He does not lend to them at interest or take a profit from them. He withholds his hand from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties. He follows my decrees and faithfully keeps my laws. That man is righteous. He will surely live, declares the sovereign Lord. Suppose he has a violent son who sheds blood or does any of these other things. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live, but his father will die for his own sin because he practiced robbing his brother and did what was wrong among his people. The word says that God will punish people, children up to last children. It was contradicted by this word in Ezekiel. It says that our son will not share the guilty of his father. Since the son has done what is just and right and has been carefully to keep all my decrees, he will surely live. So it means people will not share guilty. People will be asked about their own guilty. Children will show what they have done. They will declare their actions. They will never declare uh, the actions for their parents. You will never declare the actions of your family or your father or mother. You will show your own actions. If you're supposed to work and you haven't worked, God will ask you about that. If it was not yet the right time to work, God will never ask you anything. Glory to God. We are now waiting on the Bible verse in Samuel. Then at the end, we shall be discussing about these words that we have read. We are reading the first Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. We are now going to talk about the rich people. People. This word is not for Christians. It's not even for the prophets. This word goes to every rich person. If you are a rich person, this is your word. God gave me this word and I took one day to pray for it to ask more about this word. God told me to tell rich people, read in the Samuel, the first Samuel chapter 2, from the first verse up to verse 10. That's where you go to read. This word says, Then Han prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly and let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. 
He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sees them with princes and has them in his heart a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the word. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants. But the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It's not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Glory to God. God gave me this word after seeing so many things. God took me somewhere near the ocean. I found there a very big tree, a huge tree that I can't hug with my two arms. I only hugged one side of it. God told me to hug that tree. Hug the tree on the side that I will tell you. From there, I saw a huge thing coming from up. It came from the China. It kept saturating, saturating the whole world. After saturating, then it came and fell in the ocean. It fell on the ground near the ocean. I asked about what I was seeing, and God told me that this is that word in Samuel. I asked what he says, and God told me that he go and tell rich people that I am coming. I am coming to control so that every person will know that I am a God. Go and tell rich people that they should assure their treasures and wealth in heaven. Every person should assure their wealth in heaven. And I ask it in heaven how go and tell them to assure their worth in heaven this is the meaning of the word that i told you after being given this word i was really confused but god told me now i am coming to humble people who try to lift themselves up there is a proverb which says that you may throw a stone and you think maybe that stone is going to fall nearby you and then you see it saturating the whole world glory to god may god help and be with rich people then god ended from the word which is found in judges in the judges but for rich people wherever you are whatever you own your respect their whole respect is for the lord please give a value this word of god if god say that he gives life he gives poverty as well as wealth he puts down and also takes people up those who were disrespected can be given a say i would tell people who are disrespected because they follow god's ways and nobody cares about you you are having so many troubles yet you respect the lord hold on your heart because god is looking at you wherever you are whatever which is not making you happy yet you obey god's laws god we do better for you glory to god every person who is listening to this message please read it care about it because god is coming and he will never keep quiet god is coming and he is saturating the whole world god we touch to every person even though you might be selling avocados and those avocados did not come from the right way god we come and ask me does this wealth gives me respect i saw uh, a lot of things in the big industries these big companies i saw everything falling in the ocean yeah. and I asked what is this god told me that the main reason i am doing this people are now being given things to give to the poor people if god tells you to give that thing to the poor person people are now going to search for rich people i give it to rich people instead of giving them to poor people who are the ones who are supposed to get them they see their relatives to give them the wealth they see their friends to give them wealth and i saw everything falling in the ocean people stood up and get confused i was still next to that huge tree which was nearby the ocean i touched it on one side i kept seeing everything i saw big companies big industries getting lost i kept seeing everything everything and god told me that now people are worshiping bayal they are praying fake gods i am not sure if there are still people who praise and worship these fake gods which are made in clay but i saw them praying for fake 
fake gods. People kneel in front of fake gods and say, you are my God. And they walk with handmade things in their hands, drawings and all that. So God told me as he took Bayad and cut it into pieces, that's how he is coming to cut all those fake gods into pieces. And God told me to tell people that I saw everything fell in the ocean. And God told me that what if I give you millions because I haven't ever had millions at my house. If I give you 50 million, you subtract 45 million. You stay with 5 million. Then you subtract 7 million. Would you do that? God is coming to take his part. The government will take its part. Then you see what you remain with. God is coming to balance. To those who are listening to me, if you are listening to me, Mama Eric, I'm not going to die. I'm here. If you are listening to me, the way God gave me such kind of example, you will be having 45 million. The God will take his part. Now people are saying the government should do them a favor so that they will never pay taxes. There is no favor in regard of taxes. And the government will ask people to pay taxes. And God will also be asking people what they did with their wealth. God will also be asking about taxes. If you have 50 million and you owe the government 45 million, the government will take its part and you will see what you will remain with. And even the God will also take its part. If you haven't saved anything, you will stay with nothing. I am talking about how I saw things. That's how I saw it. After so everything fell in the ocean, I also saw those things being distributed to other people. I asked about why and God told me, how did mice ate your clothes? Yet you were there. Why didn't you avoid it? The same way you might be having businesses and projects, however much educated and experienced you might be, you will get lost. Without knowing what happened yet, it's God who is doing its part. And that's when God told me that every person with wealth should ensure them in heaven. If you got it from hell and you sacrifice blood, God is making that to lose value. God is looking at it and nothing shall stop it. That's when God gave me this Bible verse in Samuel chapter 2 verse 1 up to verse 10. Those uh, who were rich are now working on the fields. Now the poor people are given a say. There are people who used to see me in the other images but today I would like to ask everyone to see me in the other image. See me in the image of God because I am speaking for God. I am God's ambassador. However I can be, I am God's ambassador. That's what God taught me and we have no excuses because this word is so strong. God gave me this Bible verse where it says, Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies. For I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no one rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were fully hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sees them with princes and has them in heart a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the word. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the weak will be silenced in the place of darkness. Can you hear this word? The God is saying he will guard the feet of his faithful servants. For them they will never get ashamed. This time is a time for working together. God has covered people's mouth because since the mouths were open, nothing right they have just said. They have just spoken to harass the name of 
of God. In the eyes of yeah, that's when God say those who are happy for the musical instruments are not being happy anymore. They no longer dance. Why do they dance for? There is too much sorrow in the house. Instead of people sitting at home and praise the Lord and pray for God, they are much more involving in sins. They got time to do sins. They forgot that God is doing variation. God doesn't care about things which are not weighed fully. God care about your actions and that's what he looks at. Here God says that he will protect the foot of those who are faithful. But those who do sins, we get ashamed and we get troubles because no one will fight with their arms. Will you be fighting? Those who fight with the Lord will get troubled. God will judge every person across the world and the horn of those who are faithful will be lifted up. For those who are anointed by God, you shall get happy. For business people and those who have companies and organizations which are supposed to help people, God is coming to control. People will sit together and look for a solution of how they can fight for laws. They will never get a solution. Countries will meet and they will be asking themselves what is causing this loss. They will never know anything because it's the God who is coming to work. Even Though people are working, but so many people will stay with nothing. We are now going to read the Bible verse in Judges. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. In our days, people are not respecting the Lord because uh, it's in their heart. People stand up and say, we love Lord, we love God, but they speak it by their lips, not by heart. People say that they are following God's rules, but they are following people's rules instead. Yes, God say, don't kill people. Uh, Evaluate yourself. I used to a person of God. I used to people of God. And by the time you reach in the church, you keep singing, we shall go to heaven to see those who are there. May God bless us. God is angry. God told me that you don't praise it by your lips yet your hearts are very far. Don't obey the Lord by the rules. On verse 14, God said, Therefore, once more I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Walk to those who go to great depths to hide their plan from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us, who will know. God is speaking to people who go to hidden places to do sins and keep saying nobody's seeing, nobody's not seeing, but I would like to tell you that God is watching over you. God has seen it and he's laughing at you. And God is saying that the intelligence of the intelligent is going to perish. The intelligence of the intelligent are going to vanish. There are things which are hidden from them. In a very short time, uh, will not Lebanon be turned turned into a fertile field? Uh, the fertile field seemed like a forest. In that day, the deaf we hear the words of the scroll and out of gloom and darkness. The eyes of the blind we see. Once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord. The needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The ruthless will vanish, the mockers will disappear, and all who have an eye for evil will be cut down. Those who with the word make someone uh, out to be guilty, who ensnare the defender in court, and with false testimony deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore, this is what the Lord who redeemed Abraham says to the descendant of Jacob. No longer will Jacob be ashamed, no longer will their faces grow pale, when they see among them their children, the work of my hands, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of the Jacob, and we stand in the hour of the God of Israel. Those who are wired in spirit will gain understanding. Those who complain will accept instruction.
When people will see uh, the intelligence uh, of the intelligent people being perished, they will allow the instructions and the rules from the Lord. Those who will turn back and ask for forgiveness, we walk with the Lord. There is also another Bible verse that I was given when I was seeking for the explanations of all the things I was seeing. My people, come in the house, hide yourself. Hide from my anger until it will stop, um, because God is coming on the earth to punish people for their sins. The world will show its blood, and it will never hide anything. God gave me this word when we were praying and seeking for the explanations of all these things. We are now going to read in Malash chapter two. Now we are still talking about the people of God who are doing wrong. What God wants from us is to be His. Ambassadors everywhere for the world to have peace. Everyone is supposed to be God's ambassador everywhere. After being an ambassador, you should tell a gay that what you're doing is wrong. You can tell an adult what you're doing is not right. You should all stop keeping quiet. If you see something going wrong, be God's ambassador. And tell it to people. If people who drink market what they do, you should also market who you've known. If you are a prophet, tell another prophet that it, there is what heaven wants from us. The heaven wants us to return back to say the truth. God is asking people to stop selling their origin land. We are still talking about the pastors and prophets. You are also among the prophets. May God bless us. This is what I have been saying. God has passed a pair of scissors in the stomach of people, but they haven't seen it. In Malash chapter 2, verse 3, verse 4, it says, And you will know that I have sent you this warning so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord Almighty. My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace. And I gave them to him. This called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found on his lips. On his lips, he worked with me in peace and uprightness and turned many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with Lev, says the Lord Almighty. So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people because you have not followed my ways but have shown partiality in matters of the law. I was given this word to give it to the people of God. That's what I'm telling you. If you be attentive, you're going to eat. If you be attentive, if you be focused, you're going to work with the Lord, something powerful. God is angry. People of God, prophets, people in choirs would think that God likes suits than them. God doesn't like suits than heart. God wants an open heart. People have taken the respect into their suits. God said he will never give away his respect. No matter what, God will never give away his respect. People are saying that we are working for God on lips. No one is humble to clean up their souls. No, 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 no. You can't tell a pastor or a prophet to clean up their souls. You can't talk to apostles. Even though they might be having sins, you can't touch them. God is the owner of the respect. God wants humble hearts. God loved David because he had a humble heart. God loved Saul because he had a humble heart. And remember, Saul turned into Paul. Now people are changing from being Paul to being Saul. People are coming from Israel to Jacob. It is so sad. Instead of being God's ambassador, you are harassing your God. God is so angry. Let me advise you. Let me tell you something. God taught me that every single person should be God's ambassador everywhere you are. You should walk with God a heroic action. Do something smart with God. Glory to God. Don't advise people wrongly. If you do so, you will get troubles. Let us read another Bible verse in Micah, chapter 2, verse, uh, from verse 4 up to verse 9. Go to Micah, uh, 
part to this chapter and read and evaluate yourself if you're doing right. For me, I am seeing so many signs, so many gestures that shows that God is with us. I shouldn't have spoken this, but now I am telling it to the whole world. Listen to what God wants from us. You will go to which they will do nothing for you. They will turn into blinds. They will turn into stupid. Because nothing they do right. People are now prophesizing peace. When you realize, you can see that there is no peace. People are now prophesizing wrongly because they want something else from people. Because they want food from you, I will tell you something good so you can give me food. Mama Eric, I will never work for food. I will eat because God said. I will wear because God promised. I will never wear because I told people that God said, yet he didn't say anything. No, 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 no. I will never do it. I will tell you what God told me. I will never prophesy wrongly. Today, God told me that he is making all people who consider themselves people of God, he is turning them into blind so that everything they will say will never happen. God told me that I am a Mikai and I feel it. Now, uh, may God bless us. God says that you can be having money, but you lack peace, yet you have money. Money can't save you. God is very angry. We are now going to read the Bible verse in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16 up to verse 20. At the end of seven days, uh, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a weak person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their lives, that weak person will die for their sin, and that will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person and they do not turn from their weakness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but we have saved yourself. I am still talking about the uh, prophets. Everywhere you are, if you are a prophet, you are a child of God. Everyone is a servant of God. When you feed a person, you feed the God. When you give clothes to someone, you are serving the Lord. When you find the person on the street and then you save them, you are serving the Lord. There are so many things you can do to serve the Lord. Serving the Lord is not only going to church or uh, worshipping the Lord. Allow me to read another Bible verse from Ezekiel uh, chapter 18. It says, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat so grapes, and the children's teeth are set on age. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer call this proverb in Israel, for everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. And also God told me to tell rich people to read uh, in the Bible in Samuel, in the first Samuel, chapter 2, verse 1 up to 10. Read there. And again, um, go and sing a salvation song, uh, a song of 38 in the book. It says that, uh, no, why are you breeding that boat? Go and read another word from Malash, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. It says that, then who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and and honored his name. I give nothing to be saved, and we've read a word of people who pray by asking for money. It is in Mika. For those uh, prophets, people who are prophesying to get money, God doesn't cost anything. If God has a heart of love, gives you anything without even asking for it, without even saying that you're hungry. Before I come back from the scenes, I could cook and give uh, my other colleagues so that they can eat. So if you are in the church, will you see your church? Churchmates getting hungry, yet you have what to feed them. May God forgive those people who ask for money to pray for people. As we are ending, now you can give out your number. And also may God bless you for serving the Lord without asking for money.
May God forgive those who are like that. May them come back from the sins. Um, if you need me, my number is 07841 Now we are praying as we end and we are thanking every person who was with us uh, since the beginning up now. And we are also going to pray for God to strengthen us, those who are saved, those who have cleaned up their souls and those who are not yet there, so that God can strengthen us and give us wisdom of how we can survive in this world. Let's now pray. We thank you, our Father Lord. We thank you for your word. Allow this word go and touch every corner of the world. May it touch everywhere. May it touch to black and white people. May it reach to those who speak Nyaranda in English, any language. May all people who speak different languages hear this word. This word has mercy and forgiveness. There is reward and blessing. There is reward and punishment. Dear Lord of peace, the holy name of Israel, may every heart which will listen to this word, may it change. May it get saved. May all sinners come back from their sins. May all those who owe you a promise to give it back. Because there is a Bible verse that says that giving a promise without working on it, it's better to never give it, because that will be your judgment. If you've started with those strong people, it means we also end up with humble people or poor people. Because your Bible verse told us that if these things we touched everyone, to every mountain, to every person, to every people, father, parents, everyone. If you are putting signs on your people, you are putting signs of blood. May every heart which we listen to this word, girl, changed and be the support of that heart. For young people, people and adults, for those who are easy and strong in the name of Jesus. Be among us, be with us. May your whole name come to every person who will listen to this word. And we know that your power, when it comes, it changes everything. It saves people and it saves those who have never heard of you. We touch to children who do not obey their parents. People are coming back from their sins so that they can listen to you. Wives who do not respect their husbands, we also listen to this word. Wrong prophets are also turning back to ask you well about it. They will know about the Holy Spirit because you, we know that you've worked with Hannah and also Micaiah at the same time and they got to know who you really are. Give all the prophets to prophesy about peace. They should prophesy about peace. We beg you, Jesus, to give every person your Holy Spirit. Protect them from any evil. In the name of Jesus, may also take away the spirit of lying. We pray for it in the name of Jesus. Give us your Holy Spirit, which will give us promises which will happen. Thank you, Lord. We beg you and we pray faithfully in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.